This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I am the Reverend Rachel A. Wan, pastor of First Presbyterian Church of Wausau, Wisconsin, and I am so delighted that you are joining us for worship this day. No matter the time nor the place, whenever the faithful come together, we do make up the body of Christ. So let us now prepare ourselves for the worship of our Lord. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. In you, we come home to rest, to wrestle, to love, to be loved. We dwell in you. Before the mountains were born, before you delivered the whole world from everlasting past to everlasting future, you are God. In you, we are home. We dream, we flourish, we fade, we rejoice, we dwell in you. Let us pray. God of creation, you have made us to be nourished in your care, and you test us so that we will turn again and again toward your gifts. Show us how to love our neighbors and ourselves and teach us to delight in your law so that we will know the way of gratitude and thanksgiving. In the name of Christ Jesus, our Savior, we pray. Amen. Our spirits are like new grass. At the dawn they spring up fresh, but by sunset they dry up and wither, blown away with spiritual death. Let us confess our frailty before our merciful God. Lord, we confess. We do not live as those worthy to be entrusted with the good news of your grace. 
We relate to others callously, as though we do not trust the gospel ourselves. We seek to please and manipulate, using flattery to gain praise and distinction. We use condescension as a mask to cover insecurity or a need for power. Our motives are mixed, impure. Lord, reassure us and cleanse us in Jesus' name. Amen. Beloved ones, believe again the gospel that in Christ we are accepted as we are. Believe that we are forgiven. Loved with the delight of a nursing mother cherishing her child. Believe that we are the church, the body of Christ, called to love one another as gentle children of God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Before we read the scripture today, I invite you to pray with me. Lord Jesus, your understanding of scripture astonished and humbled all around you. Send your spirit to illumine this word to us now, that our understanding and wisdom may be increased and that we might follow you more closely. Amen. We listen now to the scripture reading from Matthew chapter 22, verses 34 through 46. That brings us back to the greatest commandment, one of our favorite passages. So listen now for the gospel of Christ. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now, while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, how is it then that David by the Spirit calls him Lord, saying, the Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? 
no one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our text from Matthew's Gospel this week continues a series of confrontations that Jesus had with the religious authorities in Jerusalem during the last week of his life. They have been trying to trap him and expose him for teaching falsely. From a group of Pharisees, one of them, a scholar of the Jewish law, poses to him a question that seems non-threatening on the surface. Scholars like him were experts in the Jewish law, discovering and studying all 613 different laws or commands found in the Jewish law, the Torah. The Pharisees believed that all the commands were equal and any attempt to rank them was frowned upon. So really, this was a trick question. If Jesus were to pick just one out of the 613 laws, the Pharisees could criticize him for not picking any of the other 612. So the response that Jesus gave was interesting, and it had two parts to it. The first part is about loving God with all your heart and soul and mind. This statement is a reference to the Shema found in the book of Deuteronomy. The Shema states, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. This profession of faith was a key part of Jewish worship. And Jewish people were expected to recite this verse at many times throughout their day. And it would have been very familiar to all of those who had gathered around Jesus in the temple to hear his answer. The Shema was an orthodox statement of Jewish faith. And those Pharisees who were present would not have debated Jesus on the greatness of it. Then Jesus gives a second part to his answer, loving one's neighbor as oneself. That is a quote from the book of Leviticus. And what Jesus does here is rather interesting. He pulls together these two commands, uniting them, love of God and love of neighbor. He makes them equal in importance and inseparable from one another. To love one's neighbor, one must love God, and to love God, one must love one's neighbor. Jesus ended his statement, his answer, with, On these two commands hang all the law and the prophets. As Jesus had taught throughout his ministry, it wasn't about following a certain set of rules and regulations. This command to love God and to love neighbor is the key to understanding and interpreting the entirety of Scripture. Presbyterian preacher and theologian Tom Long said this, The whole law, said Jesus, every one of those 613 commandments is really about love, loving God, and loving neighbor. The scholars of the law had a picture in their minds of every law hanging by a strand to a peg, to some key passage in scripture. Jesus refreshes that image by portraying the whole law and the prophets, everything, as hanging by a cord to the twin pegs of loving God and loving neighbor. It is with this very understanding that Jesus, throughout his ministry, was able to reach out to those in need, to heal the sick, to befriend the outcast, even when doing so was against the rules. One might ask, 
How can love be commanded? If love is forced, is it even love at all? These questions arise when we think about love as a feeling. If we feel love, then we are generally inclined to act in ways that are influenced by that positive feeling. Conversely, if we don't feel love, we feel justified in withholding our actions and refraining from doing the right thing. Feelings of indifference or apathy are obstacles that keep us from living out these commandments in our lives. The command to love God and to love neighbor is not a command to have warm and fuzzy feelings. Jesus isn't talking about an emotion. Instead, this is a call to action, a call to commitment. It is a call to a new way of life. Biblical love requires an act of will, an unwavering commitment to follow through. That is generally not something that comes naturally to us. It is a decision that we have to make. We choose to love or not to love. But when the choice to actively love has been made, the results can be rather surprising. When we follow through to act on our commitment, positive feeling often does follow. Here's a story by a UCC pastor by the name of Catherine Matthews. She said this, several years ago, inspired by the witness of two older women, longtime and faithful members of the church who told me their stories about tithing, I decided to take the step of increasing my own giving to the church that I loved. Increasing to a tithe was a challenge, but it surprised me that my feelings followed after the action, or after the commitment, if you will. I found that I loved my church more when I gave more to it much as we love our children more after giving of ourselves to them over many years. She continues, it seems that when we decide to set our hearts in a particular direction toward something or someone, and when we do the things that fulfill that commitment, our feelings often follow afterward. The laws of giving and Sabbath and loving, I believe, are God's way of getting us to do what we need to do, what's good for us. These laws give us the direction for setting our hearts. It is a thing of mystery. Friends, our Lord Jesus Christ has commanded us to love God and to love our neighbor. This isn't a call to have warm and fuzzy feelings. Instead, it is a call to a new way of life, a life that intentionally challenges us to look out at the world around us through the eyes of God and to actively commit to show God's love to the world. It's a way of life that presents risk and pushes us out of our comfort zones and causes us to grow in our faith. It is by no means easy, but it is worthwhile. Today, as we go from this time, may we each choose a greater commitment to love God as God has already loved us. Amen.
Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart, in my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. Lord, I want to be more loving in my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to be more loving in my heart, in my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to be more loving in my heart. Lord, I want to be more holy in my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to be more holy in my heart, in my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to be more holy in my heart. Lord, I want to be like Jesus in my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to be like Jesus in my heart, in my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to be like Jesus in my heart. I invite you to pray with me. God of love and hope, our hearts are full of joy and gratitude today because of your faithfulness to us. You love this world so much that you sent a son, Jesus, to be our hope and salvation. So we come to you together with our joys and our concerns, along with our need for your help to love you and our neighbors as ourselves. Knowing all too well that today's problems are enough for today, and that we need not borrow from tomorrow, we entrust to your compassionate care all the burdens that we can no longer carry, the worries that we can no longer bear. We confess, O oh God, sometimes it feels like we've been through enough. One crisis passes and another one comes in its wake. Hurricanes churn over warming waters. Fires burn woodlands and homes on our coast. Fear for our country deepens our, with widening political divisions. The effects of a pandemic worsen daily in our area. And with our ancestors, we are tempted to cry, How long, O oh Lord, how long? Hardship and illness can come into our lives in waves. We cannot endure without a sure sense of your presence with us. We cannot rest without a glimpse of your sovereignty. While we want to remain faithful, we cannot help but lag in zeal. Hear our prayers, we pray. We know, merciful God, that you never abandon us. Your faithfulness to the covenant you make with your people is unwavering. You walk with us, you go before us, you envelop us with your goodness and grace. Help us to know your presence with every breath we take. May our awareness of your nearness empower us then to love our neighbor, to do justice and love kindness, 
and to keep walking with you so that others will come to know who you are through our witness. Make of us a grateful, joy-filled people, a light to which others are drawn, the reflection of your love. These things we pray in the name of the one who calls and empowers us and who taught his followers to pray in this way. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Hi. Hi, Jennifer. Hi. Hi, what brings you to Wassa? I'm the new VISTA worker assigned to work with Wisconsin Association of Free and Charitable Clinics. Nice. With Jeff, Dr. Oz, and First Presbyterian Church's Free Clinic. Twenty water. Thank you. So what specifically are you doing there? I'll be working on clinic policies, establishing outreach clinics, and also developing those much needed partnerships to get our guests the medical care that they deserve. Sounds great. Tell us about your background. Yes. So I graduated medical school in the Philippines in 2017, and I also have my undergrad in biology from Loyola University, Chicago. And for me personally, I am the youngest of five children. I have four nieces and nephews, and I am the godmother to two children. Because for me, community and family are very big values. It's great to hear. What do you like to do on your spare time? In my spare time, I like to go out hiking, try new recipes in the kitchen, and also listen to podcasts. Well, I'm also a really big movie buff. I watch all kinds of movies, all genres. And I have my nine-year-old rescue dog. He's my best friend. And even though he's blind in one eye, he does see all the doggy treats. And, um, you know, just... I want to say thank you to everyone for watching this video, and hopefully one day I can meet you all in person. Bye! With thanksgiving for the bounty of this earth, for the work we have been given to do, for the joy of sharing so that others may also live, we gather our gifts at this time, loving our neighbors as ourselves. Please join with me in our prayer of thanksgiving. Generous and living God, you made your people in your image, sent your Son to be the face of your healing love in our midst, and promised through the Holy Spirit your guidance and power. We thank you for the ways in which your people have cared for each of us, we thank you for the ability to give for the sake of others. We ask your blessing on these offerings, that through them the needs of this world can be met in Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Beloved family of God, be gracious and kind to all, with both the gentle acceptance of a child and the wise maturity of a compassionate mother. May the Lord bless you and lay loving hands upon you, that you may be strengthened and to continue to walk in the faith that others have passed on to you to move ahead into the promised land. Amen.